And good evening, everybody. This is Michael Policera. I am with LogicalSignals.com and also TradersHelpingTraders.com. And this is the LEO Wave update for the NASDAQ 100 for Tuesday, August 3rd, 2021. Uh, first thing you're going to notice is that I have reverted and relabeled uh, our preferred count at the moment, and that I've also now put into place that minute wave four. So where we are, we're in the process of finishing up a minor fifth wave advance, which will complete a minor five, a lunar year five, primary five, cycle three. So we're, we're still on course to reach that high. But as I presented yesterday, the minor wave four, in my view, is complete. And the uh, minute wave four did complete where I had marked it previously at the low at 14,811. So what has taken place out of that and includes today is that we had sub minute wave one of minute five. So we're going up in, in a minute fifth wave, which will complete that primary five, fifth wave, et cetera, et cetera. So we've got this first sub wave of that minute wave five. And then we got the second wave and that was that Beautiful little sell-off we had and then bounce right back off of um, this morning in, in US trading. And it was great, it was wonderful. The rally off again gave confirmation that that low, that was it. We were in place. And the market did not immediately just race, but it did fairly quickly get itself back above. Uh, man, don't do it, oh, it doesn't, I hate it when my computer does these crazy little things because it can't keep up with me. Um, but it did march pretty cleanly right above 15,000, which was good. In fact, it actually was right off of that low and it got itself up to 15,017. Then it pulled back and then it went again. So eventually finishing the day, just above that first resistance level of 15,048. And so the rally itself really gave con con confirmation that, that was it. We're done, pullbacks are over, the advance is back on. Now, what we're now beginning to count, and I fully suspect that this sub minute wave three is going to subdivide in and of itself. So we're subdividing in minute five, and we're going to now subdivide in that sub minute wave three. So there's gonna be a lot of divisions, but this, the strength of that rally was very, very impressive. Now, whether this completes the sub minute wave or sub sub minute wave one of that sub minute three, yet to be seen. So what, I've already added and kept in place was where we can begin to expect minute wave five to get to. And our first course would be right here, but I don't think that that's where all of minute's gonna end up because you can see we have a beautiful wave one, wave three should be stronger and longer than that first wave. So very possibly we just get up to here or here and complete this sub, sub minute three. So again, minute three, and then we're gonna break down inside. So maybe that whole sub minute three gets us up into this area. It's all possible, stranger things have happened, but we don't have any other points right now where I can, I can give one more, but I'm gonna take it down right away because it could change. And that would be, we, we would relate the sub minute three to the sub minute one. So I will run Fibonacci from there to the top of wave one to the bottom of this on that. Uh, just telling you guys, I got to get that. Let me see if I can get this. That's this here. Remove that. Fibonacci retracement. Got it. Okay, so let me change this very quickly. Oh, I could have done it right there. So I can do this. 
there, to there, to there. So now you can start to see, we get a little bit of overlap, and again, that overlap is right up in here. So we get some there. That would be 15,094. I really want to see this get itself back above 15,120. And I actually want it to get above that level at 34. So getting again, 618 matches up with 1.382 for this third against the wave one. It all fits very, very cleanly. So I'm going to be favoring this area just below 15,200 to complete just the minus of minute wave three. So we're going to look for that. Pullbacks again should be shallow, and less, but being that that is just wave one, so let me get rid of that again. So again, that's the level we're going to be checking out. Um, you would then turn and run just Fibonacci retracements again. So we have to switch back and forth, and you're just going to measure the bottom of where wave two bottom to wherever this tops out. So I don't think this is it, but that's what you would run your, your retracements to. And then you're gonna look and see what your wave two, the sub sub minor wave two, where it should get back to. And outside of that, I do suspect that these like wave fours and, and other smaller wave twos, as we build, they should be shallow. This first wave two might be a little bit bigger because it's gonna react in terms of what the other markets are gonna do as well. And I, if you look at my uh, update today on the S&P, it is also looking to have just completed uh, a first wave up within this um, intermediate wave five that we got going on here and in the S&P. And that kind of could pull that market down. And again, it's gonna be a wave two. So the S&P does have the potential where it could really start to drop maybe, you know, about 20, 23 points or so from its current levels. And that would, of course, I believe, affect the, uh, the NASDAQ as well. Although maybe not as hard, the NASDAQ gets in its own little world. Maybe the fact that it's rallying and the S&P is pulling back, we won't get much in either market. We'll get a decent rally in the, in the uh, NASDAQ. So for tomorrow, I do believe that we will, again, see higher, March higher. Um, I definitely would definitely be looking this has already kind of been cleared and dealt with, and I wouldn't suspect anything is going to be very light resistance. It should not really uh, create much of a hassle for the market to get above uh, once it gets going. And then I'm looking for 51.20 to 51.93 to 52, uh, 15,200. That's where I think the wave three ends. But maybe it's just going to be three or three ends uh, for all I know. This could be quite a dynamic wave and would not be totally unexpected. You kind of felt this bullishness in the market, even though they were selling it and they did look like they were selling it hard. When they came back to buy it, there was just get out of the way. And that just gave more indications that A, that completion point was in, but B, the underlying strength in the market remains on the buy side. So a lot of people came back in. And that's where I'm going to leave it. So continue to trade using moving averages. Once we start to get to new highs, folks, above 15,134, we're in uncharted waters yet again. So we don't have chart points to base things on. We only can then go on what the Fibonacci's extensions are telling us. And historically, so we have relationships between waves three and one. We have relationships between a lot of different markets uh, or, or wave structures. So what I actually can do is and I'm gonna do that. I can give us an, a slight indication if we compare wave three to wave one. So right now, I'll come back down to that low, take it up to that high, bring it down to that low. And let's see where we get any overlap. So that's gonna be these right here. So. Uh, wave three would be equal to wave one at 15,097, but I'm only looking for wave three to be a lot larger. Look at this. Boom. Again, we have an overlap right there. And then we have additional overlap way, not way up there, but way up there. So we have first overlap at 15,192. 
So that's the same zone as F618 for the larger move. And then we have additional overlap at 15,260. So between 47, so between 50 and 60, 15,250 to 60, that's another overlap zone. So possibly this third wave could get us all the way up here. Then we pull back, then we have another, another four and then another five. So again, structure is gonna be important here. So we still need to be able to count within this sub minute three, we need to be able to count three waves, excuse me, five waves. And within that five, there is a chance that they'll subdivide yet again. So within three, so we get a, a decent one, a pullback in two, and then within that third, it could subdivide into its own. So we've got a lot of counting to do, and I'm gonna be very detailed, and hopefully we'll, be all, we'll all get there together. So for tomorrow, uh, wherever this does top out, I think we should kind of get up here a little bit and then pull back as this sub-sub minute wave one of three, pulls in and we get that second wave correction. Then it's off to the races yet again. So fun times, I think lie ahead. We're gonna track this very carefully because again, we are finishing. We're finishing some very higher sequenced uh, degree advances. We're finishing them on, on a minor level. We're finishing them on an intermediate level. We're finishing them on a primary level and we're finishing them on a cycle level. We are staring down the barrel at a large degree corrective phase coming up. And still my initial call would be that that correction will bring us back to the lows of March of 2020. So more on that as we progress, as we get up there. And in the meantime, have a great trading day tomorrow. Continue to use your moving averages. They really, really do work. They guided the entire decline down this morning, and then they let you know this was going. When it broke and it broke and it just went and it started breaking above all the moving averages. And eventually you can see on the hourly, it got it all back in alignment to go up. So on the hourly chart, it continued to just turn and point higher. And even though the 200 day just kind of sat there flat as a pancake, it could have cared less. The rest of them did react and move. Keep that in mind. Have a great trading day tomorrow. The next update will be on Wednesday, August 4th.